Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com Okay, we're back. I'm driving again. I have committed our changes so far. We have all the passing tests. And we can carry on. I want to do some refactoring. First of all, the tests have a lot of duplicated code. So I think we can get rid of all the routers. All the routers. Yeah. And have only one. Let's run. Yeah. Oh, good. Why don't you put it in the setup and instead you create a, a constant there? Well, I don't need a setup so far. Every test has a different setup because I'm creating my SUT, my system under test, or my flow with different setups. There are a couple of techniques we can use here to get rid of some duplicated code. I like to have a, like a factory method because it's at some point we need any other dependency here. Mm -hmm. We would break all the tests. Yeah. If we refactory now, we're going to be safe about this refactory with clean tests. Should we do it just to show? Okay, just, yeah, for showcasing. Yep. Okay, let's do it. So we can create a function, and we can say make SUT, yeah. something like that. That's simple. Uh, and we pass questions, that's an array of string, and it returns a flow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we can just copy and paste this one. You just pass the questions there. Or we can just return actually. We pass questions, and and here we can just say make SUT. Well, you don't even need it can be in, a, in in the same line as start, right? You don't use the SUT. Well, in this case, yes, I can just have a one liner, mm -hmm. like that. Yes, makes things very simpler. And here we can say make SUT. With this question. Let's run the test. Since it runs very fast, I can just run the test every time I do a small yep. refactoring. The same in here, but now it's Q2. And now we have Q1 and Q2. Okay. But here I need to capture. Or I can you just can call just start, start start twice. Yeah. Well, not really because, no, because it's a, it doesn't return it's itself. It's a flow, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's some patterns that say every time you execute an action, it return itself. So you can carry on right. sending messages to it. I don't want to use this right no, now. So. No, it's... Okay. We run the test again. It's all good. I also like to have the factory function in a helper area so we can have a, a mark there. Okay, we can do that as well. So at the end of the test. Yeah, I think that's fine. So we create a mark like this. Helpers, yeah, usually. Yeah, and at some point, if you need to create this flow in a different test file, you can probably just move mm -hmm. this helper section to a file and yeah. you can reuse it. And share it with other okay. test files. Yeah, yeah I agree. So what did it gave us this refactoring? What did it give us? As I see it now, we can change the initializer here without breaking the tests. Mm -hmm. It's just a simple technique that may save you some time. Everything that saves me time reduces the cost of what I'm doing. It gives more value to what I'm doing. So if you combine a lot of small techniques. Yeah, you come up with like this huge improvement in time at the end of the project, right? It's all about consistency, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. I would like to have another test because this test is very specific for first question going to the second, second question. question. Yeah. What if I have three questions? Now I have to say from second question to the question, yep. it doesn't scale. Yeah. So I want to have a failing test. Okay. And make it pass. So I can guarantee that I can progress from any number of questions. So if I start and answer first and second question with three questions, three questions, cross to second and third question. So if I answer one 
and then I answer another question. And we need another cube. Yes. Okay, so we need this. Right. I want to have Q3 here. Yes. And I hope this fails because we didn't implement <laughs> that. Okay. Okay, there it is, the failing test. And now it's time. This is not scaling at all. Uh, I don't want to do a refactoring, but to implement that, I'm going to need probably another function. And I will call it for now route next. Okay. Okay, so I can pass the question and I can give it an answer. So if I can move this in here, uh -huh. I can code this recursively. Okay, makes sense. So I don't need strong self anymore. No, you don't, you don't need self there. Yes. So wait, here I could just say current. Yes. Question index index of question. Right. So the next question will be the current question index plus one. Mm -hmm. Then I call the router to route to that question, but I don't want to be calling this block. I want to pass a function to it. Same function, right? Answer callback should be route next. Mm -hmm. And here I can say route to question. You have the first question. And I want to use the same callback. Yeah. That's it. Ah, but this block only gets one parameter, a string. And this function needs a question and the answer. We need a function that gets a question and returns a function. So we can have something like this. And this is going to return a string to avoid closure. So instead of it, we return a closure. Right now. And now we need to put back our weak reference to self. There, yep. Yeah. Strong self equals self. Well, we need to say guard let. Yes. Else, return. Don't do anything so far. Mm -hmm. Then we don't need the answer, actually. Well, and it passed the question here. And we can make this optional. And we can do the same here. Route next, next question. Okay. Strong self. Strong self again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now we made a test pass. Now we can refactor this. We have the recursion we need. Yes. Okay. So how does this work? So I get a question and I return back a closure that expects an answer for that question. And that's exactly what is happening here. So yes. I'm routing next and I'm getting a question and I'm generating a closure that knows how to investigate the next. Right. But we still have... You have a bank there? A foursome wrap here. Yes. And we are not checking the bound of the array here. Mm -hmm. So we still have a bunch of problems we need to fix. Yeah. I don't like this strong self. I'm thinking about a way of getting rid of this, but at least I don't like the name strong self. I don't know. It's very noisy. Yeah, yeah. Feels also bigger than it should be. Yes. Okay, so I think we need to write another test to get rid of those. Yes. For some rot. At least one. Okay. Yes. Before we continue, I had an idea, a small refactoring there. We can type alias the answer callback, you know, a string to void. Okay. The closure type. You know. Yes. I think it will make it a little bit more clear. Okay. So where should this type alias live? Not in the flow. I would say in the, in in the, the router, router, probably. Right now. Okay. We can call this answer callback. And he has this type. Yeah. 
That's it. That's it. And we can Call just it pass it here. And we can replace this here as well. And here. And this needs to be router dot answer callback. Okay, so we need to give it the namespace. Yep. Namespacing. I quite like it. Not sure. Okay, let's see if that compiles. All right. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Let's let's try to get rid of the bank. Yes. That's what I want to see here. So if I start and I answer the first question, but I have only one question, I don't want it to route to anything else. I don't want it to route in the next question. Yeah. There is no next question. Does not route to another question or it doesn't crash. So if I start with one question, I answer this question, I want to see only one routed question. Yes. So let me run this. And okay, it crashed when you're trying to get the next question. Uh -huh. Because there is no next question. Out of bounds, right? Forcing it to do it. Yes, out of bounds. What we need is if the index of the next question right is lower. Is lower. It's less than, than the count. Count. Yeah. We're gonna do this. Yeah, and you have to say so, so. Okay, we're gonna refactor this. Yeah, there we go, it passes now. So we are safe there. We still have a bang here. But since like the only way to progress from question to question here is internally on this class, there's no way you're gonna call this with a wrong question. But I still don't like having a foursome wrap there. So we can also make this if. Yes. Let. Okay, I've noticed this sometimes in Swift where I get to a point that, well, this behavior is internal to my class. I can guarantee that this will never be nil, but I, I still don't want to force them wrap it because maybe I'm going to change something in the class and I'm going to break it. So, and there's no way to write a test to force that since it's an internal behavior. So I just let the compiler help me. Right. And just by using the Z flat, I got rid of that. And now I don't have this undesired behavior. Couple suggestions here. This is a private function, yes. right? So let's make this private. And I don't want to test it. Exactly. Directly. Yeah. I test it through my interface. That is the start. Yes. Your and when I fire the answer callback, that's my public interface. Yeah. So there it is. I think we got a loop for the questions. Now we need to think about the result. Yeah. Okay. Since we start talking about private scope and public scope, Let's think about this now. Should this be public? I think this is, should be private. I think both of them should be private. No one should have access to it. Yeah. There's no need. Have an extra line here. Yeah, and here, I think it reads weird like route next. First question, I would say from, maybe. So route next from. First question and from next question. That's on the test and yes, it still passes. Let's have a look at those tests. I think you can get rid of this since we have one that test three. Okay. It's it's implied yep. it works the two as well. Okay. Okay, okay our tomato is done. Let's just Make sure everything is about this. Yeah. And we still we have no questions. It's empty. And with one question, with another question, with two questions, it was the first question. If we start twice, okay. I think that's it. We have the loop for all the questions. We just run the test before we finish to make sure it's passing. So we can commit and finish this tomato. Cool. All good. Yeah. 
Okay, we want to reflect about this tomato. Yeah. We finished the question to question progression and we need to think about result now. Yeah. That's the next tomato, but this is done. And we have everything tested. I don't think we ever have to come back here and change anything. Well, maybe the type question or answer. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think that would break any test. Yeah, probably not. I'm not very happy with the private function implementation. It's pretty ugly, but the good thing is that it's private. Mm -hmm. We have all the behavior tested. We can refactor as much as we want yep. without breaking anything. Or at least if we break something, the test is gonna tell us. So I'm inclined to just keep going. Yeah, me too. And we refactor when it's time. I have 100% confidence in this code. Sounds no good. No fear at all. Sounds good. You happy to start thinking about the results next? Yes. Okay, so let's have a break and come back to work okay. on the result. Let's do it.